Hello, everyone. OK, thank you for attending our uh, presentation session. So I think we can get started. OK. So uh, hello, everyone. This is Jing Jing Sun from Meta Power Team. So uh, t today, together with me, is Bo Wen, also power engineer from Meta. And uh, uh, Mohamed is our mechanical engineer. So we will present, uh, give a presentation on the high power uh, rack. Uh, V3. Uh, basically, it is a 50 volt set power rack. Uh, we will briefly introduce the designs. Before we start it, also, uh, I would like to thank Dimitri, our another mechanical engineer who has contributed a lot to the overall HPR V3 mechanical design and to these uh, slides. Okay, let's start. So this is our agenda. So we will first uh, go through the overview design of the uh, high power rack, uh, uh, HPR V3 set power rack, uh, from the concept to the kin component, and uh, then to the application cases. Then we will talk more details about the mechanical design of the overall HPR V3 architecture. And lastly, we will give a, a detailed example of, of a specific power system. Uh, including the operations and implementation. So uh, in this uh, page, you can see on the right side, this is the overview of the side power rack, where you can see we have one IT rack and a side of it is a HPR a side power rack. So in between, we have horizontal bus bars on, on the top area and the bottom area to connect these two. So why we need such set power rack architecture? Basically, it's driven by the uh, rapidly increased power demand from the AI workload. We know that uh, for the single IT rack, currently there's no sufficient uh, space to accommodate all the IT gear equipment and also the uh, hardware power, pro uh, power pro hardwares. So with the dedicated set power rack, we can uh, create more space for those uh, to stack up, step up more power hardware. And also in this design, we don't have extra uh, power conversion stage. And also we based on the uh, traditional 50 volt DC bus uh, distribution system. So overall we maintain, uh, still maintain the high end to end power delivery efficiency. And uh, also we create uh, space uh, also, uh, we, we can maintain less system design changes and implementation um, complexity. So um, currently in Meta's uh, design, uh, the power roof line we have for this set power rack is up to 300 uh, kilowatts DC power. But in the real application, given the uh, pulse of loading uh, impact from the GPU load, we do need to consider uh, power de ratings. So uh, it's around up to around 250 kilowatt per rack. So uh, this slide, we will talk more details on the key hardware components inside the uh, side power rack. Still here, we present uh, the front wheel and uh, a rear wheel of this side rack, dual rack systems. So um, the rack is still based on the standard HPR rack with minor modifications. And for the power shelf twice, we uh, currently we can uh, deploy two generations of the high power uh, power shelf system. One is the 33 kilowatt PSU and the BVU uh, power shelves, and second one, which is um, still in uh, development, uh, but we are targeted to uh, mass have the mass production uh, early next year, which is the HPRV2. So each power shelf is around the 72. Uh, kilowatt output power uh, for both PSU and the BBU. And for the bus bars in such dual uh, rack power system, we have two types of bus bar. One is the vertical bus bar on both the IT rack and the, the set power rack. Second one is the horizontal bus bar bridging these two racks. So for horizontal bus bars, currently we have two versions. One is the purely the passive version. Second one is we have internal fans to help improve the thermal performance and the overall power rating. So for the vertical bus bar, we also have two versions. One is the air 
cooled version. Currently, it's used for the uh, inside the side power rack. The second one, we also have a liquid cool version, which can boost up the uh, power rating up to 700 kilowatts. Currently, we already used it inside the IT rack. So we also have an optional uh, uh, power, uh, power device, which is the super capacitor uh, trails. This one is used for the case where we have the pulse loadings from the GPU load. So it can help buff buffer the pulse load and smooth out the input uh, current. And for the communication wise, we still use, based on, use the VAT400 based on the um, MOBUS communication. So uh, currently for uh, in Meta, we have several uh, different platforms that is planned or deployed with such separate rack. Example, one example is the uh, GB300 rack from, based on NVIDIA's uh, uh, GPU. And uh, uh, we, we already ramped up this rack. You can see the overall structure of this rack. And uh, for, uh, uh, in, in parallel, we are trying to boost up the power roof lines of the side power rack. So this includes, we will also deploy and use the liquid cooled bus bar, vertical bus bar to improve the overall power, um, power roof line of the side power rack. And also we will uh, soon to uh, implement the 72 kilowatts output uh, power shelves. And this also includes, we, we will add more slots to add more horizontal bus bars and with better uh, cooling uh, performance of the bus bars. So next, uh, I will hand it to um, our mechanical engineer, engineer to introduce more details on the mechanical design. Yeah. Yep, thanks, Jingjing. Uh, so getting into the mechanical design of this new uh, side power rack architecture, uh, we had to make some changes to uh, some existing hardware and then introduce some new hardware as well. Uh, so main changes are to the vertical bus bar. Uh, here we have kind of an overview slide showing uh, the changes that we made. Uh, the first one being uh, specifically on the power rack vertical bus bar, we have a physical split uh, halfway up the vertical bus bar, so between uh, OU22 and 23. Uh, and what this does is it splits the power rack uh, vertical bus bar into an upper and lower power zone. Uh, and the purpose of doing that is to enable uh, better current sharing between the horizontal bus bars. Uh, we also had to make changes to the front and back of the vertical bus bar uh, at specific OU locations. Uh, so the first item there is um, at OU3 through 8 and 37 to through 42. Uh, we had to make changes to the front side in order to enable uh, our new 72 kilowatt power shelf uh, bolted bus bar connections. Uh, and then from OU 1 through 6 and 39 through 44 is where we have our horizontal bus bar connections uh, and those require some modifications uh, at the rear of the vertical bus bar and I'll get into those details in the next few slides. Uh, going into more detail on those front side changes, so once again we have a bolted connection uh, on the vertical bus bar for our next generation power shelves. Uh, once again this is at specific OU location so we had to core out uh, some copper uh, to allow for this new bulkier bolted connection. And of course, we had to add some threaded hardware, threaded hardware into the bus bar as well. Uh, into that next picture, we have this new uh, modular grounding bracket uh, with removable 1OU ground blocks. Uh, I'll get into that in a little bit more detail in the next slide. Uh, and then finally, we have some removable toolless covers. Uh, these are to allow for safety to ensure that you don't have exposed copper, uh, as well as ease of serviceability in case you need to go in there and service a bolted connection. Uh, so getting into why we even needed to do this in the first place, at least for uh, the front side changes for the power shelf. Uh, our next generation power shelves are high power density. And uh, at the time of development, there was no bar clip connector that could handle the current carrying capacity that we needed. Uh, so once again, this is done at specific OU locations. Um, I do want to stress that uh, while you can only install the power shelf in these OU locations, it doesn't mean that you can only install a power shelf in those locations. You can continue to uh, install your regular IT gear, um, and that's the whole purpose of that modular grounding bracket that I had talked about earlier. Uh, getting into the, the rear side, so these changes are to enable uh, the horizontal bus bar connections. Uh, so once again, we have to core out some copper, not nearly as much as uh, the front side for the bolted connections, 
Uh, in this case, we're just enabling a traditional uh, bar clip connector to be installed here. Uh, so pretty similar uh, interface to what you would see on the front side of an existing ORV3 or HPR vertical bus bar. Uh, and then additionally, we've added these alignment brackets. These have features for alignment of the horizontal bus bar as well as uh, features for the horizontal bus bar to latch into the vertical bus bar. Uh, getting into alignment, so when you have a two rack system, a uh, power rack and an IT rack with a semi-rigid member going across them in the horizontal bus bar, uh, you wanna make sure that they're actually aligned properly and you have a process to do that uh, repeatedly. Uh, so in the Z direction, uh, we continue to use the, the leveling feet. Uh, this doesn't change. And then in X and Y, uh, we've introduced this uh, new alignment bracket. It'll be at the top and bottom um, and this allows you to actually align the racks uh, in the X and Y direction and eventually allow you to uh, install that horizontal bus bar. Uh, so I think I talked about this in the previous slide, but um, yeah, those, those leveling feet can be used to align the rack in Z uh, and then the alignment brackets in X and Y. Um, I'll get into the actual horizontal bus bar design overview here. I won't spend too much time uh, on the on the actual details here, there's a presentation later today with some of our colleagues that'll go into this into a bit more detail. But uh, essentially you have an enclosure and then you have a positive and negative bus bar going across. You have a bar clip connector at either end, uh, some alignment pins, some latching features, uh, and then you have a flexible section in the middle. Uh, the purpose of that flexi flex flexible section is to uh, allow for you to eat up any tolerances that may occur during that rack to rack alignment. Uh, and then getting into how all of this gets put, to, gets put together. Uh, so those alignment pins uh, on the horizontal bus bar engage with those features uh, on this new alignment bracket. Uh, and then the latches engage with those same features on the alignment bracket and you can just install the horizontal bus bar uh, in the Y direction. Uh, and with that uh, concludes the mechanical design section. So I'll hand it back over to, to Bo from the power side. Thank you, Mo. So uh, I'll give an example using this SASH uh, rack. Um, this is an example we are working on with our partner. So um, the ITGR are hosted in the ORW uh, rack. You already heard a lot about that. Uh, all the power components and uh, power rack management devices are located in the set rack. So this one has um, uh, uh, 12 kilowatts PSU unit inside it and each shelf has six, so 72 uh, kilowatts power shelf. We have uh, six of them in the um, uh, power rack. Um, it was located top and down um, because the power rack is a, um, has two power zones. Um, for BBUs, we have put uh, four of them. Um, each one is uh, uh, a BBU shelf is 72 kilowatts. Uh, we also have a 12 uh, supercapacitor tree located close to PSU and uh, um, horizontal bus bar. Uh, each of them has uh, 24 kilowatts. Um, the horizontal bus bar is a fan cooled uh, horizontal bus bar uh, connect the set car to the uh, RW rack. Um, the power uh, rack has a vertical bus bar. Um, it has a uh, split in the middle, so it has uh, two power zones. Um, the RW has a liquid cooled bus bar. Um, um, hosting the ITGR. Um, the rack uh, uh, management device is uh, Wedge 400. Um, it serves as coordination of the power devices and uh, also doing uh, monitoring of the power rack. So this page shows um, the details how uh, the whole system works. So we have Wedge 400 um, managing all the power devices. We split them into four uh, mobile ports. So port one is managing all the PSU and the BBUs, and port two manage eight uh, uh, supercapacitors, and port three manage four. And current sharing uh, between um, each kind of uh, devices, so PSU uh, six shelves, they have power sharing um, uh, information shared so that they can share the load. Uh, also for BBU and the CBU, 
um, but uh, we connect the PSU uh, hardware share information to the CPU shelf so that uh, CPU knows how to help PSU to smooth out the GPU load. Um, PSU shelf uh, also uh, send a um, AC power loss signal to both PSU, uh, CPU shelf and the BBU shelf. Uh, once the AC is lost, uh, uh, supercapacitor tree will stop working and the BBU uh, will start powering the uh, IT rack. As, uh, uh, CPU and BBU shelf also has a synchronization between uh, uh, all shelves so that uh, they can work uh, all together. So that is a, a small example and back to Jingjing Jing for the uh, slide. Okay, thank you. Bo. So I think that that's all the main contents for, uh, for our presentation. So lastly, we would like to call to actions. So there is a, a QR code. So feel free to scan it and provide any of your feedback, including comments, questions, and also any suggestions. We also have another uh, a presentation, which is delivered by Dimitri. Uh, we'll focus more on, on more details on the set power rack, especially on the mechanical design. Okay. That's it. Thank you, everyone, and welcome. Any questions? No, they would not be. Those would be on a separate specification. Yeah. What specification? Uh, we can talk uh, after the call. Uh, yeah, that's related to the WASH uh, design. Um, yeah, that's uh, how we can uh, do that. Yeah, one more that uh, port can manage certain devices, so that's how we um, distribute them into three available modified ports. It's just a power rack. So, so all the uh, uh, power, power modules are uh, now in, is installed in the power rack and uh, for currently in our uh, implement, implementation, each port can only allow for like uh, up to eight devices per type. That's why like uh, here we have uh, 12 CPUs. So we split them into two ports. Yeah. Go ahead, yeah. Well, you have to listen next presentation. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, you mean uh, what, what kind of load profile that CPU could uh, uh, buffer? Yes. Oh. Oh, first rate. First rate. First rate of the sure, sure. So, so currently, uh, so this is our first uh, supercapacitor trio, and the main target is to 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 help uh, fill in the pulse, uh, the load dips, which is within around two seconds. Two seconds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it can also help smooth out some higher uh, frequency dynamics, like uh, frequencies below. I think below around 200, below around 200 hertz. Yeah, thank you. Any? Thank you. Thanks, thank everyone. You.